Hey, nerds, we understand you. Drop those controllers, lose the wizard hat, and ready your Cheetos. It's time for some hard-hitting talk about the movies, books, and games you love. So get ready, oh searcher of useless knowledge. It's time to step into the Geek Cave. Now, broadcasting from a top secret and totally awesome hidden base, I'm Ken Harris, and here's Darren Wright, Justin White, and Chad Savage. And welcome to another edition of Man, the Fans Are Gonna Be Mad at the Convention, Geek Cave Podcast Comics. I'm Darren. I'm Justin. And I'm Chad. A comics haiku. Black Lord. Canary's Legs. How do the fishnets not rip? Welcome to comics. Physics. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to thank our sponsors. Sure to source, by the way, the ad will not be read in haiku format. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Dig enough clothing from your past so you can look rad today with great t-shirts, sweater, and hoodie designs on everything geek chic. Whether you're a fan of old school gaming, anime, 80s cartoons, or you're just weird, find something for you at sureTosource.com. And Gamefly, with membership options for every budget, plus gifts for gamers of all ages, Gamefly has thousands of titles that you can keep as long as you want. And when you're done, just send it back in the postage paid envelope for a new one. Or keep it forever and pay a lot less than in-store prices. Sign up for your free 30-day trial right now using the link at geekcavepodcast.com. Uh, gentlemen, how are we doing this day? I'm good. Clothing from the past. Everything that you're into. Sure to Saurus, yes. Yeah, that works. <laughs> I'm good. Congratulations. You, Thank you. You, you. you now own the comic segment. Um, okay. I'm announcing my retirement effective immediately. Dang it. Um, okay. <laughs> I wasn't ready. <sighs> hey, you write the haiku, you deal with the consequences. <laughs> All right, so t-shirt idea. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and what's the next line? <laughs> no, no, that's the that's oh <laughs> okay, T sh oh yeah. <laughs> no, that's six syllables. Yeah, okay is two, so K T shirt idea. There you K go. K T shirt <laughs> Discord fill in the blank. That's six. No, that's only six. <laughs> Discord can fill in the blank. <laughs> Now we're just like doing maybe it prize to come. <laughs> maybe was, prize to come. Yeah, yeah. Maybe prize to come. There you go. There you go. Uh, so enough uh, poetry and arts. Comics. Um, has anybody read anything recently that they would like to discuss with those of us in the room and those of us listening on their devices? Well, uh, I do have a segment uh, that I uh, hold on a second. I gotta um, <clears throat> one, two. Three. Be gentle. Be gentle. Be gentle. Be gentle. It's Darren's first time. Motherfucker, I told you be gentle. Welcome to Darren's first time, where I pick up a random comic that I've never read before, and I ask myself, is this going to be a tag team partner for life, or is this one of those... Get in the Royal Rumble at number 30. Get eliminated immediately after situations. What the hell did there you it read? Is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. That's Now, I'm a longtime 100% confirmed pro wrestling fan. And as I've mentioned on the podcast before, pro wrestling to me is a I am against wrestling. I am anti-wrestling. <laughs> As I've mentioned on the podcast before, wrestling to me is a combination of live action stunt show meets superheroes meets dramedy. Uh, when the storytelling is good, it's really good. There's nothing else quite like it. And when the storytelling is bad, it's really bad. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so bad. Think the old sci-fi film Super Argo. If you haven't seen it, don't watch Super Argo. Okay. If you have okay. seen it, 
you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, luckily, this month's book lays the smack down on bad storytelling with frenetic art, a main character that is instantly worth investing yourself emotionally in, and a twist so unexpected it reminds me of when Seth Rollins turned on the shield by attacking Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose with a steel chair. Or for you 80s and 90s kids, when Hulk Hogan betrayed Randy Savage and Sting and joined the NWL. Either way, this month I read, Do a power bomb. You have to say it just like that. Okay. Do a power bomb. Uh, Do pu- a power bomb! There you go. Published by Image Comics. Do a and- power bomb? Sure. And written by Daniel Warren Johnson, a comic writer uh, behind such storylines as Wonder Woman, Dead Earth, and Murder Falcon. Murder what? Murder Falcon. I haven't read that one yet, but now it's on my radar. Right on. Yeah. Um, the first issue starts off with an intergender championship match between Ua Steel Rose, the champion of the fictional uh, TGPW wrestling organization, defending against her arch enemy, Cobra Sun. La 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 la. A large man with a lion's mane of untamed hair who disguises his identity with a luchador mask that kind of looks like a shark. You know, wrestling. Okay. Yeah. Lions made of hair, luchador mask that looks like a what? Shark. And his name is? Cobra Sun. Okay. Yeah. As you were. All my questions are answered. I don't yeah. know what. Now you I, I'm just making sure I heard correctly. Now, Yua's daughter, Lona, is in the crowd, and disaster strikes during the match when Cobra Sun accidentally drops Yua on her head during a move where both wrestlers are standing on the top rope, breaking Yua's neck. She dies shortly thereafter. Ten years pass, and Lona is trying to break into wrestling, but it turns out nobody wants to give her that big break into the industry because of what happened to her mom. She also Who got find- a big break. Yeah. <clears throat> she also finds out that her dad has been sabotaging her efforts, basically getting her blacklisted in the industry. And they get into an argument. She storms off only to be accosted by a creepy man who promises he can bring her mom back to life if Lona will only wrestle in a tournament that he's setting up in another plane of existence. See, turns out he's a necromancer. Uh, His name is Necro. Yeah. Necro Ah. the Necromancer. Yeah. And uh, he, he discovered pro wrestling through an intercepted TV broadcast, fell in love with it, and now he wants to hold the grandest wrestling tournament of all time. And that is where the first issue ends. Wow. You can't see my face right now, but I am smiling. He is. I had a heck of a time with this book. In the presentation of wrestling itself, do a power bomb! Uh, straddles the line between telling the audience that all of the fighting in the ring is real and maybe hinting that there's more than a legit athletic contest going on, much like wrestling itself. The supernatural twist is fun. It it's nothing we haven't seen in wrestling before either, especially if you're a fan of The Undertaker. Uh, the art is very chaotic at times, adding a bit of grittiness to the more over-the-top, flashy characters, and it really works. Basically, if I had to sum it up for um, for people who aren't into pro wrestling, think of the 2008 Mickey Rourke film, The Wrestler, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now combine that with Dragon Ball Z. Okay. I loved every second. I will definitely keep tagging in to read this one. If you smell what I'm cooking, brother, I give this one a straight up five. Ooh, yes, out of five. I was wondering when Macho Man was going to show up. There you go. Awesome. Time is always right when the time is right. Huh? <laughs> That's the key to a good Randy Savage no, promo. No, no, is to I, just say everything twice. Say everything twice. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> uh, the 80s and 90s were weird, kids. Ain't that the truth? Uh, mm. Well, thank you, Darren. I, I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Have you, have you read anything else uh, non-wrestling yes. related? I, <laughs> yes, um, but still spandex equivalent. So, ah, or, well. Ad- adjacent, I guess. Uh, but I... Uh, so... We're all children of the 80s slash 90s, you know, and there was a little known show uh, called X-Men, the animated series. Mm -hmm. You might have heard of it. Oh, yeah. I didn't get that channel. It was on Fox Kids. 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, there was a tie-in comic series that basically, for the first two years of the show, retold each episode, but in comic form, using the current comic style, which included, you know, maybe some more liberal use of blood and violence than Fox Kids would allow on TV. Right. I, they were called X-Men Adventures. I love them. They released an omnibus of those. Nice. I have it. <laughs> so what I'm of hearing course. you say is I don't actually have to watch this cartoon anymore. No, you can just borrow the uh, omnibus when I'm done. Nice. X-Men, the animated series, the adaptations, is a fairly faithful uh, representation of the animated series. I say fairly because there are a couple things that are changed. The first episode, everyone has, practically everyone has seen the first episode, Night of the Sentinels. Uh, where the X-Men break into a mutant control uh, facility to erase all the files because mutants are being hunted down by the government. And in that episode, spoilers for a 30-year-old show, by the way, uh, in that episode, uh, the president orders that the Sentinel program be shut down because, hey, these mutants risk their lives. They must have had a reason to do so. They change that in the comic to uh, some undefined commander issues the shutdown order it's a weird change it's a change that doesn't make any sense but whatever and that kind of thing happens periodically throughout the book where they change a a character just for the sake of having a different character not really sure why uh but for the most part the art is great um if you were disappointed with uh episode four's fight between Sabretooth and wolverine oh boy you should be a lot happier after reading uh the uh comic adaptation version of it because they don't hold back man they go balls out it's great uh so yeah i highly recommend picking up x-men the animated series the adaptations obviously this is something that uh is being reissued because of x-men 97 hitting Disney Plus probably next year. Uh, But if you liked the cartoon at all growing up, or if you were even curious about it, maybe you missed it, pick this up. It's a a really good find. It was a good cartoon. The theme song slapped. Yeah. It's the only cartoon that I know that has tubular bells in it. (laughs) Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, highly recommended. (sighs) Uh, both of both of my comics were a good time this month. It's nice. All right. Well, after Chad, I want to borrow it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and speaking of Chad, hi, Chad. Hey, how's Justin? Uh, eh, you know, like the in- <laughs> like the inside of a glass coffin remains to be seen. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. That's good. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, have you read anything? I read a couple of things. Um, Second Coming's got its third season, I guess. Since cool, you know, s- since they do like a short run of six issues, and then another short run of six issues that they're on their yeah. third one. So Sunstar and Jesus are back. Yay! You know, continuing to show the world is not nearly so simple as we'd like it to be. Now we've got Sunstar, you know, guilty about a former classmate. And Jesus is babysitting a super-powered baby. Sounds right. So there's some fun there. And oddly enough, I got a question, but it doesn't have to do with Jesus. Um, It has to do with X-Men again. Okay. So it's kind of stupid. I I mean, as far as I can tell, there are no stupid questions. And now it's time. For Chad Savage's stupid question. So it turns out after last month, we learned that um, Magneto can lift Mjolnir, you know, in Ultimate Universe and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So could we just kill him with a wooden bullet? (laughs) I mean, in X2, they had plastic weaponry, so... Yeah, but they didn't use it. No, because they were idiots. As soon as Magneto starts twitching, you pull the trigger. So, projectiles, force plus velocity, <laughs> wood, combustible. Um, <laughs> it's better than bad. It's good. <laughs> rolls downstairs. Um <laughs> 
Yeah, I'll get back to you. Okay, I'm you, gonna you, say yes. You made a log reference. Yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm going to like pure speculation here. I'm gonna say yeah. I I bet a wooden bullet to do it. I mean, we keep trying to throw a Wolverine at him. That doesn't work. No, your skeleton's made of metal. I don't care. I'm gonna screw him up. Ah, my skeleton. Turns out they finally admitted it's literally just a distraction. That's the only reason they keep throwing him at him. <laughs> <laughs> because Magneto keeps bothering to catch him. Well. Wow. Um, any any other new news or new business? Nope. Those are the comics I read. Next month, uh, issue 26 of Amazing Spider-Man comes out. We've been told... That the writer has been advised to stay away from conventions after the issue hits newsstands. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> say what? Yeah. So yeah. in ju- so in June, look for that review. <laughs> yeah, the current storyline has been less than spectacular. The current storyline amazing has been uh, garbage. Absolute one hundred percent flaming dumpster fire garbage, and Marvel seems to be tripling down on it. So. But who told him to stay away from conventions then? Other Marvel editorial members. Oh dear lord! See, uh, yeah. if you remember our his round- bosses, if you remember our roundtable uh, from like wrong answers only a couple months back, what did Peter do? Right. You know. Um, well, that's been answered in Amazing Spider-Man twenty three, twenty four. Basically, uh, Peter uh, and Mary Jane got sucked into this different world. He got back out. Tried to get help from the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. They wouldn't help him. So he went to Norman Osborn, creates a small nuclear explosion to get back into that world. And uh, Mary Jane has been actually there for a lot longer, a lot longer than Peter thought. And so she has a a husband, Paul, who has the personality of wet toast and uh, not not Paul on the Discord and uh, two kids. And so that's been going great. And... Spider-Man's my favorite Marvel character, but this run might kill me. <laughs> so, uh, June's podcast. Plan ahead, folks. Bring popcorn or marshmallows or anything to roast over an open fire, actually. Sounds like we're bringing uh, Spider-Man. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> he beat Chad beat me to it. Mm. Uh, well, uh, I guess if there's nothing else, um, Kent... That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Prepare yourself for Justin's Long Box. Yeah, baby. Extra long. So we've talked about the 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 X-Men omnibus. Mm-hmm. And Chad asked an X-Men related question. Mm-hmm. So it's it's funny that today my long box is not on, but features Wolverine. Okay. So today we are talking about the three part. Just to back up for those just joining us, because sometimes we get new listeners. Hi, new listeners. This year I'm dedicating the long boxes to strange or bizarre or weird Um, issues of comics or storylines. This month is the three-part miniseries Hulk Vereen. Oh, no. Hulk Vereen? Yes. Not to be confused with Ben Vereen. Yes. So I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory. Oh, my God. If the listeners could see Chad's face right now. It is one of, like, partial disgust, partial curiosity. Chad, is your got a no threshold crossed? Oh, I'm I'm interested. Good. But I'm interested in the same way. It's like, I kind of wonder what Ohio smells like after the train wreck. Like, I don't think I should find out, but I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, topical. Uh, tragedies notwithstanding, <laughs> we're going to find out. Everybody's fine. So, yeah. So a little bit of backstory. Intending to build the perfect killing machine, the Weapon X program transformed an ordinary soldier named Clay Cortez into a Hulk-Wolverine hybrid, complete with nanotech adamantium in his skeleton, gamma energy in his blood, and healing abilities, known as Weapon H. 
but he had enough and he left and now he's living a wonderful life with his wife and kids and somehow they won the lottery and they're millionaires and it's 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 fine it's wonderful oh wow yeah and this is where the story picks up we are at an unassuming yet very high tech prison for one prisoner the leader you know, uh, yeah. Hulk's nemesis, very smart nemesis. The agent going to talk to him is, you know, is told to discard anything that may be dangerous, including paper clips. The Hulk has taken on some new and interesting traits where he only comes out at sundown now. <laughs> sun's getting low, big guy. <laughs> yeah, sun's getting low, big guy's coming out. <laughs> and he has somehow obtained gamma draining abilities yeah they don't explain maybe it's in a previous thing but whatever whatever the, the yeah. leader or hulk no the hulk the hulk only appears at sundown and has gained gamma draining <laughs> abilities so he's okay. like a vampire but only for gamma stuff yes so they go to the leader to ask for help the agent gives leader the paper file which he promptly rolls up into a tight tube shoves it into the agent's eye, killing him. The security guard runs in, slips on another sheet of paper that he's flicked out, and breaks his neck. The leader is allowed to escape. Dun, 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 dun. Wah, 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 wah. We cut to Clay and his family having a wonderful dinner while the Hulk, who's been rampaging lately, is on the news and... An argument starts amongst the kids. Who would win, their dad or the Hulk? Well, their dad, of course, because all kids think their dads can beat up somebody else's dad. They go on about their day, and we're intercut with... Um, it's a nice montage of Bruce Banner traveling and Clay having fun with his family. Clay and his wife and the kids get home. They check the security system because they know people want Clay if should they get the chance. Everything's fine. And then Clay sneezes. Now, normally this wouldn't be, you know, a, a bad thing, but he has a healing factor. He's not supposed to get sick. As he sneezes, he snicks, pops the claws. Because, you know, he's got adamantium claws like Wolverine. Sure. So they've planned for all contingencies. They've put into action plan C. So the wife and the kids get in the car, don't tell him where they're going, and leave. It's for their own safety. This is what's been agreed upon. Well, Clay is suspicious. And about this time, Banner shows up at Clay's house. They get to arguing, and a fight almost ensues between Clay and Banner. Then the sun goes down. Now we're stuck in a fight between Hulk, Vereen, and Hulk. And we see this nice little <laughs> montage of both of them hulking out. And they're taking, you know, they're going toe to toe, blow to blow with each other. We see the leader has tracked them down. And agents are trying to capture the leader, but he's telling him, listen, just let me handle this. You want the Hulk dead? I got this. The Hulk gets the upper hand and starts zapping Clay's gamma energy. And then the Hulk starts to sneeze. Because apparently the leader, who has things at his disposal, was able to, through a mosquito, infect Clay with a virus that alters things just a little bit. And then the gamma sucking happened, and now the Hulk is sick. Through a mosquito. Through a mosquito. I love it. Yes. More fighting ensues, and the leader tries to um, manipulate Clay, telling him, listen, just go ahead and kill him. Besides, I know where your family is, and I can cause you a lot of trouble. Which was a bad move on the leader's part, because now Clay is chasing after the leader in full, you know, angry Hulk mode with adamantium claws. Yes, in retrospect, bad idea. Yes. Um, as Clay is chasing the leader, he gets sucker punched from behind and it's Wolverine. 
<laughs> there he is. Because, quote, somebody's been stealing my style and I don't like it. I like the idea of Wolverine just being a petty little... <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it tracks. That's gimmick infringement, bub. It pretty much is. <laughs> so the two of them start to fight. <laughs> realizing that, oh, both of our healing factors work. We don't have to hold back. And they don't, of course, until they kind of come to a bit of a stalemate because, well, you know, they can't really do anything. Hulk shows up and starts causing more trouble. Wolverine grabs Clay and pulls him out of the fray because Clay mentions that his family is in danger, which, while Wolverine is a has a gruff exterior, he has some heart in him. And he realizes, okay, something's hinky here. This isn't what I thought was going on. Saves Clay from being pummeled by the Hulk. And they ride off. In the meantime, the leader, who has been trying to capture the Hulk, comes across Dr. Alba, formerly of Weapon X. She's trying to capture Wolverine. <laughs> so the two of them form an alliance. They will help each other catch the other one's prey. And there may or may not be some mutual attraction going on. <laughs> sure. So as Wolverine and Clay are at a gas station kind of hashing things out, they see Hulk run by. Well, that's not a good thing. So they get on the bike and ride off. Hulk is sensing... Oh. It's not entirely sure what Hulk is sensing, but he knows where he's supposed to go. He stops at a beach by a river or by a, a, a large lake and jumps off into the distance. Well, right as sun comes up, he turns back into Banner and splashes down. They save him and see a large underground underwater facility, which just happens to be where Clay's wife's parents live. They used the lottery money to build this safe house for his in-laws that he didn't know about, and that's where they are. You know, because plot. The kids are all geeking out because, well, not only is our dad Hulk free, but now we got Wolverine and the Hulk in the room with us, and it's just awesome. <laughs> so... Dr. Alba and the leader, um, through monologuing, describe their ultimate plan, which is to combine the Hulk's DNA with Wolverine's DNA. Not like they did in Clay, but to create something new. A Wolverine, if you will. Yes. That was awful. <laughs> and this, never mind. Oh no! This whole thing is mad. Yeah. Okay. This, oh, yeah, this is Wonderland mad. But what about a walk? A walk is that better than Wolverine? Slightly. Okay. It's at least punchy. Walkerine. Yeah. So having the facility, the uh, safe house compromised, Clay, Wolverine. Banner, the two kids, and the wife all pile in the station wagon, which can drive underwater, by the way, because that's how they got there in the first place, <laughs> and head back topside, um, where they are ambushed by the leader and Dr. Alba. They manage to fend them off just long enough to get the family to safety, and then the three heroes go to stop. Well, actually, no, that's not true, because Banner and Hulk had been captured... I'm sorry, Banner and Wolverine had been captured. So now Clay, having saved his family, has to go rescue these two. They're in a large laboratory in a, you know, Petri dish the size of Manhattan. And through science shenanigans, their DNAs are combined with each other, creating two creatures. Banner's Hulk, who now has a healing factor and adamantium claws and skeleton, and a large green, hairy Wolverine with gamma radiation and whatever. Seriously, they didn't skimp on the hair on this dude. Of course not. Hmm. They are under the control of... Well, actually, no, they're not under the control of anybody. They are just two mindless machines. 
killing machines. They get teleported up into the air where they then crash down and start fighting each other and anybody who tries to stop them. Because chaos. <laughs> Captain America and Black Widow show up in a cameo off in the distance and go, I, we don't know what to do. There's, It's just the two of us. Clay shows up and says, I got this. And they're like, yeah, he does. Seriously, it's it's a cameo. It's great. Clay shows up and the three begin fighting. Blow for blow. Clay, still having his mental faculties, hits both of them and runs off with the two in chase. Heads straight for the leader and Dr. Alba, kills whatever controlling mechanism they have, at, right as Hulk Vereen 1 and Hulk Vereen 2 show up, and are about to beat the ever-loving snot out of these guys. Well, they had a backup contingency plan. They push a button, and the experiment fizzles out, leaving Banner, Banner, and Wolverine, Wolverine, and then they teleport out because reasons. And once again, the day is saved, and Banner and Wolverine go off into a nearby bar wearing nothing but towels and underwear to go have a beer because last time they had a beer was the last time they fought. And off in the distance, the leader and Dr. Alba, saddened by their defeat, but emboldened by their love, kiss. The end. (sighs) They did not skimp on the hair on that dude. No. They did not. Uh, Chad pulled up uh, an image. (laughs) I got hung up for a while whenever uh, you're referring to leader as Hulk's nemesis. Um, I don't remember the guy on TikTok, but uh, for whatever reason, my brain went to he's his nemesis. Uh, nemesis. Just, yeah. Dr. D- Dr. Deathman. Yeah. Nemesis. <laughs> Lord Deathman. Lord, Lord Deathman. Lord That's Deathman. right. Get it That's right. right. Uh, he will probably go in the long box someday. I hope so. Uh, I want to thank our sponsor, Shirtosaurus and Gamefly. Uh, be sure to check out our other shows, You Want Me to Watch What, The Week 3 Podcast, The Sporadic TLDR, and on YouTube, Geek Cave Plays and Retromantics. Look us up on social media, and all of the links, including to our Discord page, can be found at geekcavepodcast.com. And when you, and when you get there, say hi. Be sure to tell your friends about us. We are found on all of your favorite podcasting services and now here is your out of context comic panel we see hawkman carrying batman under his arms you know he's hawkman has his arms under under batman's getting ready to land he's been flying him around batman says take it easy i'm not built for sudden landings hawkman is that a complaint? Why are you called Batman if you can't even fly? That's Batman. A good point. The name Ostrich Man doesn't strike fear into the hearts of evildoers. <laughs> for Kent, Darren, and Chad, I'm Justin, and this has been the wonderful world of comics. And remember, everyone's a geek for something. <laughs> <laughs>